Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I am of the stars. And I'm out here in the beautiful desert. Beautiful sunlight glistening off little shiny places in the rocks. And a lot of people around for this small area. I went for a nice hike. I probably have some pictures of boulders to show you later. Beautiful boulders. Just an incredible day. And uh, I've been experiencing in the last week something that I thought I'd talk to you about a little bit. Um, I'm still working through it, and so I'm mentioning it just as a heads up for those of you that are facing it now or were, are about to face it. And uh, it goes a little like this. Uh, There's something unusual going on in the astral plane. Or maybe maybe in the hairline thin dimension between the astral plane and the physical plane, which I call the the in between. And uh, some people call it the plane of forces. Both are fine. So, right in that area, it seems, something is happening. Uh, I mentioned in a, a, a video, just maybe a week ago, about the jinn, the creatures known as the jinn, which is a totally separate race from the human race that coexists with the angelic realm and humans on earth and how I had an experience that seemed to me to be caused by jinn uh, that it felt like a like a locomotive roaring inside the wall of my room for a while maybe a minute and uh, how this this feeling I got was that this was connected with the plane of forces right and so I I thought very little further of it I had had only one other uh, encounter with a being that might be termed jinn-like, but uh, and that was many years ago. Um, I, after I found this, this being, it, uh, it was like bolted to the earth where it was in the mountains. And I brought two other people, a, a man and a young person, to see it, to see if they could feel the energy there and like that. And uh, apparently one of them could. <laughs> and so I have kind of cor corroboration that something was going on there. Back then, long ago, oh, you know, close to 20 years ago. And uh, I thought that that being, uh, now that I've done the research, is an, what's called an ifrit, um, which is a hell-bound being. Uh, somehow sim similar to the jinn, but negative in aspect, negative towards humans and like that. Malicious even, very malicious and extremely powerful. And so uh, I let that completely be. And in, in uh, future years when I would go past where I thought I had found that, far up in the uh, untread reaches of these mountains. I could never find the spot again. It was like it was magically concealed. It's just actually pretty aggravating because I'm very familiar with mountains and like that, and I never get lost or, or, or so far, <laughs> knock on wood, <laughs> I never got lost or anything like that. Or sometimes I get misdirected for, for a short while. But <laughs> And so... But I lost this ifrit uh, completely. I, I lost the path up to it. I lost even the road. Every time I went by it, it was like there was a mirage going on there. <laughs> like the landscape had completely changed. And there you have it. Apparently they can disguise where they are so that people can't find them. So those are the only two instances ever. A long lifetime, many years. One ifrit and one theoretical chin, right? But uh, let's see. Last night, a series of events happened. I hope I can get this in the right order. Let me deal with the, the issue that was gin-like first. 
Uh, this happened actually at the end of a long series of hours, an hour of events that happened again out in the in the desert where, where the, these beings seem to like to be. Uh, there had been this this scenario, this astral enactment with many characters and a complicated skit, you know, which I'll be talking about in a minute. And then after that, I heard this roaring, rumbling sound in the not as strong as the other one that I'd heard a week ago, in the wall of the inside wall to the right of me. And then I heard like a voice say, and now the sound will be in the other wall. And suddenly the sound shifted to the other wall. It was this rumbling like there was this this machine going right there, you know. And so I went to look, you know, I'm scientifically curious. <laughs> and I went to look and suddenly the sound shifted to way out in the parking lot. Now, I have no known explanation for that. <laughs> Something about the plane of forces, but I don't know what. I have no idea and I've never found anybody that's just maybe one person that even knows anything about the plane of forces. Some people see it. Uh, maybe the shamans work with it. I became like energetically sensitive to it and many people are becoming sensitive to the electromagnetic field for instance. In fact in uh, the World Health Organization article from around 2005 or so there's a, a new description of that kind of sensitivity, uh, el electromagnetic sensitivity and what to do about it. So that's one aspect of, of becoming um, clear with regard to the plane of forces, okay. So what was the other thing that happened? It was almost a poltergeist effect. Let me think for a second. So the other thing that happened, uh, I'd have to class in the middle between the, the, the astral stories and the plane of forces issue. And first I'd like to just you talk once more, uh, just a quick run through of where we are as a as a species that's clearing in the astral plane, and that and that has to do with the creation of subconscious astral stories um, that that a lot of people hear together and add to with their un unconscious minds. Okay. And these stories can be very um, negatively aspected because they reflect the, the disharmony of the samskaras that we have in our unconscious minds. And uh, they can generally be arranged, interestingly enough, along the themes that uh, theology uh, advocates as the, the seven deadly sins. So. So there are those, and, and there are certain others that other uh, theology lists use. But I think those are the major ones. And so the samskaras that are acting themselves out in the astral pl plane negative right now in terms of astral st stories have to do with these seven deadly, seven or more deadly sins. There can be a whole story around the notion of lust or uh, a negatively aspected lust, you know, not love. And, or around the topic of anger and raging feelings and like that, a massively detailed story um, created by the subconscious minds of many, many people. And so I've been to uh, various geographic areas recently and I have found that these stories they go on in a particular locale based on like the subculture in that locale. For instance, in Colorado there are cowboy stories that go on with a cowboy theme because of the cowboy and ranching background there. Uh, down south, down towards Arizona by the border and New Mexico by the border, there are stories to do with the border which have the same names of people but like the, the cast of characters but uh, they, they have different themes based on the, the issues for humankind in that area. And the same thing in, in other areas. You know, each area is like um, uh, geographic, newospheric entity even, with bleed through from one to the next. 
So, so there are these astral stories that are slowly clearing because people are rising to consciousness about them. Like it's not at all unusual now for me to, to be walking along a new trail and to find people who are talking to each other uh, consciously on the astral plane. Very, very f frequent right now. I would estimate one in ten people on Earth are now awake in that regard, which is wonderful news. It's like vastly major news. <laughs> So, but also on the trail like today, I have found it's like some little entities jumping on people and spreading the astral negative stories from one geographic region to the, I can hear them suddenly start, beginning to start up with the, with the astral negative stories from another region. And one of the major um, astral stories that's happening right now has to do with greed and wanting to steal other people's things. Uh, and so today I was walking the trail and I heard coming towards me uh, a couple, the, the ma man in the couple had a, like a little astral entity apparently on him that was saying something like in the code language that, that's used right now, uh, by the name of a person that I hear all the time uh, on the astral plane whose name like is a code word for for many different things but mostly uh, the negative qualities in the divine masculine and then with some certain subgroups such as the light workers that name is used in an endure, endearing and loving way so in general I would say that name which has changed over the years recently since 2012 that that name represents this current state of clearing of the divine masculine which varies by 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 group of people uh, and their own state of clearing you see so uh i was walking along the trail and and coming towards me was somebody who already had this this type of budding astral negative story on him and as they walked back towards my area, I heard them, it, it kind of flowered. And, it, and this had to do with an experience that I had just recently of having my, um, some of my possessions ripped off and, uh, and needing to take care of that. And I'm realizing, I realized at that time, very interestingly, that many people are in the process of uh, awakening to other people's thoughts right now and clearing through their samskaras and and they hit upon the samskara of greed okay so what happens then when they get the right kind of trigger such as concern or worry or fear in somebody else then an interaction of uh, energies occurs that uh, escalates their desire to steal and so, uh, and they have not yet cleared the samskara, so the likelihood is that, that stealing will occur. So, so the problem that I see is that people are becoming telepathic and have not yet cleared this samskara of, of for instance, of greed. And so, there and so they can find out other people's like fears about losing things that they find valuable or important to them and they can in their current state of clearing they can act on those so so as this couple was walking back to the car their samskaras activated into a, an astral negative story which had me concerned enough to turn around in my hike and come back and see that it was just a story and that was being played out you know when the astral story gets intense enough then there is possibility of it being acted out in real life so um and when that happens if if it happens to us then we start that worry thing that needs to be cleared it has to be cleared through and so I'm dealing with that right now I'm thinking to myself how can I feel uh, this total sense of abundance in my life how can I have the faith to know that no matter what disappears from me no matter what is taken from me there's a reason for that there's a good cause for that and 
that cause has to do with my sole purpose and God's plan for me here on earth. What if everything I had were taken from me? What would I do then, you know? So we face, I face this this crisis of faith right now to know that everything is fine and everything is okay even if if I lose every possession you know that I I have the power to co-create this reality and to to renew the blessing of God's grace in my life easier said than done right I'm gonna try positive thinking like on the way back I was going I am perfectly happy and healthy and and I have total abundance in my life like that. So it doesn't hurt to like to say good things, you know, and to lift up the arms in the air and joy and happiness and expand the chest, you know. So those are the things I'm trying. I'm it it is definitely a, a, a challenge for me to 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 have the courage to let go of everything if that's required of me. <laughs> so there's that. And I think I'll continue on with this video as a separate video um, to do with changes in the astral stories.